All righty, I have a construction update for you guys today. Things are about to get heated. So this was filmed Thursday, May 9th. Um, and as you see before you, there is a giant drill. Well, I shouldn't say giant because the drills used to actually make footings are a lot larger. That drill bit is a soil tester. So what they're doing is they're going along the entire course of this coaster and testing the soil to figure out what type of concrete to use on the footings. Um, and I'll be able to explain a little more in detail in tomorrow's update about why they are doing that. Um, but these new orange stakes with BH and numbers marked on them, that is where that machine has gone and tested the soil. So you can now fully confirm that this coaster goes all the way from Alpin all the way to Extreme Skyflyer based off of the path of this soil testing. Um, so I know that we already knew that, but this is just uh, further solidified um, the, the path of the coaster. So this one is Borehole 4 in Alpin. Um, this is where there is a large power source that has been kept, which is very interesting, but also a lot of large um, kind of caissons in the ground as well. So very confusing area. We then have this one in behind uh, Pizza Pizza uh, that they did. So that's another borehole where they tested the soil. And then um, there's an, another batch just actually right as you uh, tunnel one, um, the reinforced tunnel. There's one there. Um, and there's also uh, Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land where they were doing a lot of boreholes. So they did about um, three, four, five, six boreholes in Extreme Skyflyer. I'll know the answer actually today on Friday when I go back and see how many stakes um, there are. Or if they were just doing a really deep one in Extreme Skyflyer, which would make sense as well. But they were there for a good two hours, whereas the other boreholes... Um, they were just there for like 10, 15 minutes. Um, so this is Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land. This is where I think there's going to be some sort of grand element um, to the ride. But again, I do not have any concrete um, information on that. So please take that with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to go over um, a fact. Actually, you know what? I'll say that for the end of the video. I want to talk about um, my prediction the other day about Intamin. A lot of people are like, where are you getting this Intamin prediction? I'm going to give it a really short formed version of it and explain who the three manufacturers could be, okay? Um, but over here at Tunnel 3, they are working on either removing the electrical or something to the poutinery building and moving it. Um, we also have some more uh, markings. This is 167 along the side of the mountain underneath Vortex. So very interesting, right near Tunnel 2. They did some tree removal um, across from the washrooms just in International Show Place where there are some markings for 125 and 117. Um, so again, very interesting uh, markings. Um, outside of that, they Wonderland has been working on a lot of upgrades, as you know. So we have Vikings Rage, we have the the show building uh, for the ship, but they are removing the locker building now um, from Guardian. So this is completely coming out. I suspect there's probably going to be a footing there or something, um, or they're just getting ready for construction. Um, but yeah, Guardian is still not open, um, which is interesting. The ship, no work going on in it. Again, this is a long project. This isn't something that's going to be ready for June. This is something that's going to be ready for July. Um, so it's a long haul project to get ready for that. Vikings Rage is still not ready. They are, from what I'm hearing through the rumor mill, waiting on an engineer to come program the ride. Um, here is a new bar. It looks really beautiful in Frontier Canada. And what's interesting is on the bars, if, you, if you've noticed, they have sheets that state Wonderland's capacity. So I thought I'd film that for you guys. So indoor, 3,588. Um, and then outdoor capacity is 72,287. Um, so that is the capacity of the park. I thought I'd get that on film for you guys. And then this is Backlot's new paint job for the patio. I have to say, I'm not liking it. It clashes. Um, but comment down below. Do you guys like it? I, I'm, I don't get the park's pastel. They're obsessed with pastels this season, and it's not working. Um, I wanted to film this building because I suspect a haunted house is going in here because they cleared out all the Winterfest storage in this building. Um, so it's been removed, so I suspect a haunted house. All right. So in my last video, I told you guys I fully predict Intamin for the manufacturer. And yes, I do predict Intamin. Um, but I wanted to discuss um, something else that I was talking about in that video that got a little overshadowed. 
Um, so if you go back and listen and watch, you'll say you'll hear me say that there is a huge possibility this could be Zamperla. So Zamperla is what I call the intimate dupe. That's what I said in the video. So we don't have any fully custom built models by Zamperla on their lightning launch coaster model. Um, and a lot of Intamin manufacturers or Intamin design people have moved over to Zamperla. So they could be using a lot of Intamin's old designs, um, especially when it comes down to the spacers. Now, some of you even pointed out that it's really hard to predict the manufacturer based off of the threaded rod for a coaster. And that's simply not true. The threaded rod is actually a huge telltale sign about who the manufacturer could be. For example, I'm going to tell you guys that the three manufacturers that this ride could only be is Intamin, Premier, or um, Zamperla. Uh, I'm going to tell you this much, that Premier and Intamin both show similarities to some of the stuff I've seen um, for our coaster. Uh, there's these hockey puck things on the threaded rod. If you look really closely, you'll see them. They look like hockey pucks. Well, they're called spacers, and Intamin is one of the main manufacturers that have used those. It relieves stress on the support column and helps spread it out um, for the ride. Uh, Intamin has a very much more thicker design to their spacers than other manufacturers and a lot larger of a design than other manufacturers. Um, Zamperla, we don't know. Um, so we have a, an example of a new Zamperla right there with Top Thrill 2's design, and it looks very large um, and similar to Intamin. Mach uses rebar as its threaded rod cage, whereas no other manufacturer does that. So Mach was an easy rule out. I can guarantee you guys, I will promise you this, it's not B&M, it's not Mach, um, it's not Gertzlauer. There's a very, very, very low chance that this is Vacoma, an extremely low chance. But again, I could be wrong about that, but we did a lot of research. Now, the three manufacturers, I'm going to tell you this. This, And again, this is my opinion based off of things I've seen. Um, there is about a 60 to 70% chance that this is going to be Intamin. There's about a 20% chance it can be Premier. And the only reason I will not rule out Premier is it came from a very reliable source of mine that Premier is the manufacturer of our 2025 coaster. Now, there is a good chance I could be completely wrong and it does end up being Premier. And I do want to talk about that. So I have talked about the Premier rumor. I was the one that introduced it uh, to the coaster community. It did come from one of my very reliable sources. And it has scared me because I don't find Premier coasters to be all that, especially when put up against a manufacturer like Intamin. But there are things about our coaster layout and our um, footer uh, footprint that do not align with a Premier coaster. So unless this is some sort of new design by Premier that we have not seen yet, um, I'm not seeing the footing layout for really tall elements, especially where I know there's going to be really tall elements. I'm not seeing those patches of four footings that I would see on a Premier. So again, there is a chance that I could be wrong and that this does end up being Premier. But I will tell you that we I have it limited down with full confidence that it is either Intamin, Premier, or Zamperla. And it, like in my last video, I told you guys, I do not know. It, when I say intimate, it could be Zamperla. And that's just, we're at a very awkward stage in the roller coaster community and timeline of roller coasters where we don't have anything to go off of for Zamperla. And with Zamperla having so much of Intamin's design team on their team now, it really could end up being a Zamperla. But based off of just the evidence in front of us, I've predicted Intamin. Um, again, with the footing layout, uh, the elements, the, the length of the ride, which a lot of you are underestimating the length of this ride. Um, it just really screams Intamin. Um, but I promise you guys, I when I get concrete evidence of what manufacturer it is, like a full-on concrete, concrete evidence where I'm able to rule out every single manufacturer but one, I will tell you. I will tell you. But um, the fact that we have it limited down to three manufacturers this early in the game is a pretty good um, 
place to be in in terms of this coaster so I, I mean those three manufacturers if you look at full throttle a really long version of full throttle would be amazing at canada's wonderland a really long version of zamperla's lightning model would be amazing at canada's wonderland and of course an intimate lsm launch coaster would be amazing at canada's wonderland so in my opinion it's a win-win no matter what um so yeah i'm really excited can't wait to show you guys more. I just wanted to come out and explain it a little more detailed because a lot of people were taking, uh, missing the little tidbits, the little percentages I threw out there about the other two manufacturers. I do fully believe it's intimate, but there were two other manufacturers that I did throw in there and I didn't word it perfectly for you guys. So um, yeah, anyways, thanks so much for watching. Um, stay tuned for tomorrow's construction update. I'm sure we'll have some tea. Have a good one, guys. Bye.